Let's talk about brush settings in Substance Painter. So brush settings can be found on any like normal layer or a fill layer with a mask. And when you have the brush active, you can go to the properties paint and then adjust the different settings of the brush. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna adjust the color so you can easily see what these settings do. And you can also preview what the brush, like how the brush will look when painting. So when you're using a tablet, there's usually pressure sensitivity and that is actually a setting. So it's right here or it's right here. So you can adjust it and there's also a minimum size. So for example, if you want there to be, let's say you want this to go to 20 and you want the minimum size to be five, you can do it really specific. And then when you paint, you now have pressure sensitivity with ranges. Now, if you want the minimum size to be zero, you can now go from extremely small stroke to a very large stroke. So that is the first setting. And also the size setting allows you to control how large it is and it's percentage based. So like if you scale up, the properties should still be pretty similar. The next setting is flow. So first I'm gonna scale the brush down so you can see it, see this a little bit better. All right, so flow controls how much intensity the brush has based on its alpha. So what do I mean by its alpha? So the alpha of the brush is essentially the shape of the brush. So if you have a soft round brush like this, reducing the flow will still cause the center of the brush to be the most extreme or intense parts and then it'll start to have fall off. Now this is different from opacity. So like this is low flow. Then if we paint with that, let me increase the brush size again. If you paint with that, you can kind of see that it's it, it's basically low opacity, but it still has that distinct like fall off blending. And if you reduce the opacity, you can see that we don't get that fall off effect. So it's basically just like reducing the opacity, but it's retaining the shape. So if you want to adjust the shape and the opacity, flow is the setting. If you want to, ju to just change the opacity, stroke opacity is the setting you want. And you can always combine them for different results. So you can kind of mix, mix and match. And you can also turn on flow pressure, which can be activated here or here. And what that does, is the harder you press down, the higher the flow value. So if I put this at, let's put this to like 100, like near 100, and I'll tap down lightly versus hard. So like you kind of see the edges aren't as strong and it kind of blends in to the 100%. Whereas if I turn that off, the small edges still retain a high degree of intensity. Like it doesn't, it doesn't scale it down. So this can be a nice setting and knowing when to use it, when to not use it. I usually have it on. I usually kind of have the flow relatively low and I have that setting on for me personally. Now, depending on like what kind of thing you're painting, you may or may not want that. Uh, okay, so let's clear this layer. Let's just make a new layer. All right. So next is spacing. And you can see what spacing does if you look over here. So when you paint, it's actually just putting down the alpha, which is if we go to window views shelf, oops, let me actually bring it back. It was underneath something. You're, you're painting with this alpha, like whichever alpha you have selected. So by default, it should be a soft round, but you can click on a different alpha and it will give you different brush settings. So now that we have this new alpha, it's the same as before, except just the actual brush itself is different. So we can still adjust the spacing. And you can see that this has some things like size jitter, flow jitter. So size jitter, jitter is just randomness. So size jitter, so let's turn all these off so you can see them individually. Then position jitter, and then of course, Let's see what else is going on. So size jitter. I believe there's some other effects on this particular brush. 
Yeah, so there's different settings. So some of these alphas have different settings, but you can see what spacing does. Okay, so here's the spacing, right? You have this type of effect where if you have low spacing, you have a smooth brush. If you have high, space, high spacing, you have a kind of fragmented brush. And then if you add size jitter into the mix, it will randomize the size of that brush. And then if you have flow jitter, it will randomize the flow. And then of course, angle jitter randomizes the angle. So it gives you a more organic result to some degree. And then position jitter will randomize the position in reference to the stroke. So even though I went from left or from right to left slowly in a straight line, it's going to randomly place these around the stroke. And if you turn up the position jitter high, you'll see that it's almost like adding like specs randomly to the model now in an almost uncontrollable fashion. So those are all the different jitters. And uh, then you also have follow path. So what follow path does is it actually cares about the angle of your brush. So you can see here, like this is up and down. This is left and right. This is at an angle, like a, a, a diagonal. This is at a diagonal. So it'll actually follow the, the path. So you can see here as we're going around, whatever direction the brush is moving in, it follows. So that's what follow path does. And then also there's angles. So you can adjust it or fine tune it. So if you want it to be, so let me turn off all these jitters first. And then let's adjust the angle just for fun. Just make it something random. So now as it follows the path, the angles is uh, different. So it's still following, but now it's at an angle. So like if we adjust this, might be hard to tell. It's all the same kind of shape. There you go. So this is what it does. So then as it follows, it follows it in a diamond shape orientation. So that's what the angle does. Okay. And then back face culling. So if you paint on something and it might paint through it, it will attempt. So you can see here, it's kind of happened there. So like when your brush size is large, it sometimes paints through. So let's make a new layer just so we can see what's actually happening. So here's with back face calling on, here's with it off. So just like with sculpting in 3D, there's back face painting, like things can be affected on the back face. The back face is like the other side. So essentially because it's 3D, it's painting through the object to some degree if, a, if a, like a thing is close enough and your brush radius is large enough. So back face calling is very useful for preventing things like this. And you can also adjust the settings here. But these are the main settings. You have your size, your flow, uh, size pressure, flow pressure, you have spacing, you have stroke opacity. These are like your fundamental settings and position jitter can be useful. So like, let's say we have all these jitters up. We have like a small brush. This can be useful. Like there's, you could be paint like freckles or, you know, like skin details with like a different type of brush. Obviously not this square one, but you could see how this, this could be useful for like rapidly adding some details to something and also blending them in. So there's definitely a reason to use a lot of these, a lot, if not most of these settings. So that's pretty much it for this one. This is just a basics, brush basics guide. And all of these settings work on a fill layer. So to do that, so let's say we create a fill layer. Let's make it blue this time for variety. And then right click, add a black mask. When you go to paint on this, the, this mask, you can still use all of these settings. So like we can use jitters, uh, we can do spacing, we can turn all this on because we're painting on the mask, but it's still, it still functions exactly the same, right? it functions as you'd expect. And then if we ever wanna make changes, we can just make changes to the mask. So let's say we wanna add height. So now as we paint, we're adding these little like bubbles. So you can get pretty advanced with some of this stuff. It's pretty fun. Uh, definitely play around with it, figure out what you like to use and definitely mess around with the brush alphas. So like here's a different brush alpha. So you can see the results are pretty crazy and you can like modify things. So now we have stroke 
and maybe I want to reduce the flow. Now we have a less intense brush. Maybe I want to add some spacing. So yeah, that's the basics of brushes in Substance, the brush settings. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful or you enjoyed this. Drop a comment, let me know what you think. Also feel free to suggest any video topics or ask questions. I'll try to answer them the best of my abilities. And also check out our Turbo Squid store where we sell game ready, low poly 3D models. We add new models each week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.